Hello everyone, I am Mr. Gentleman, and welcome to my Metal Gear Solid CQC Guide, Overview and Strategies video, also known as I Can Big Boss and So Can You. I have noticed that a lot of people have been having trouble with the CQC, or simply do not know how to pull off certain moves. CQC is important for being able to attack quickly and spontaneously in a non-lethal manner, as well as for improvisational combat. So I decided to make this video covering all of the CQC skills in the game. The purpose of Ground Zeroes was to accustom players to the new Metal Gear, the CQC elements included. The CQC has been streamlined from previous games, and learning to work with this setup is key to making the most out of close quarters gameplay. You'll notice I don't call this the Ground Zeroes guide, but the Metal Gear Solid 5 guide. Since the Phantom Pain will be more or less using the same controls, this is meant to be a CQC guide for both games in the Metal Gear Solid 5 series. Note that I am playing on the PS4, where the CQC button is R2, so whatever system you are playing on, fill in R2 with whatever the CQC button on your controller is. With that said, let's get started. With Big Boss here, is Spineless Alligator, potential MSF recruit. With his help, we shall show you the basics of CQC. Let's begin with the basic throw. The throw is the fastest of all the CQC moves. It's quick, it's conservative, and it's very stealthy. However, it's also the weakest of the CQC moves. On hard mode, enemies wake up after only 45 seconds. This move is made for quick, stealthy attacks and then moving on to the next area as fast as possible. To perform the throw, you must be holding the control stick all the way in the general direction of the enemy and tap R2. You must tap it, otherwise you will perform a hold instead. A lot of people have had trouble performing the throw and have been doing the grab. The key is understand that you understanding that you only need to quickly tap the button and do not keep it held down. Big Boss will perform a different attack depending on how you approach the enemy. The different animations are purely cosmetic, as all three are about equal in speed and damage. I will now discuss what triggers the different attack animations. If you attack the front of the enemy, Big Boss will perform a hip throw. If you attack the left of the enemy, he will perform a flip. If you attack the rear of the enemy, he will perform a Sambo Suplex. If you attack the right of the enemy, he will perform a Sleg Sweep Takedown. The rare throw and the right throw look very similar, but are different moves. The rare throw is has a Sambo suplex, where Big Boss wraps his arm around the enemy, lifts them, and turns 180 degrees into a slam. The right throw has Big Boss grabbing the enemy and using his left leg to sweep the enemy's left leg. A minor issue here. When Big Boss does the right throw, the animation has him suddenly appearing at the enemy's left side. Why can't he perform this move on the enemy's right side? If Big Boss does the CQC throw near a wall or an object of decent size, and the directional stick is aiming in the general direction of that wall, he will automatically throw them into it. This works from the front or from the rear, and can be done while standing or crouching. This move works in a wide variety of situations. Note that this attack is much more powerful than the normal CQC throw, meaning that the enemy will be knocked out for a longer amount of time. In fact, any throw or attack that knocks the enemy into a wall will knock them out for 4 minutes. I refer to this as wall damage. A nice touch is that certain attacks cause enemy to trip over objects on the ground. A variation of these sorts of attacks is throwing someone off of a high ledge. If you go to perform a CQC throw, while the control stick is aimed directly off the edge, Big Boss will throw them off of it. Another ability is the ability to throw guards into one another. Sort of. 
the reason I say sort of is because this isn't actually a special ability on its own. I noticed during gameplay that I would do this move often, so I assumed that it was simply a matter of doing the CQC throw while the directional stick was held in the direction of the second enemy. So, when I went to make this video I attempted to recreate it, and I ended up unable to do so under normal conditions. But, with a little experimentation, I noticed that whenever I tried to do this near a wall or a sizable object, it worked. So in reality, this is a variation of the wall throw. What this really means is that if you have two enemies near a wall or a sizable object, and you attempt to you do a CQC throw, while the directional stick is aimed toward the second enemy and the wall, Big Boss will target that second guard as well. It sounds complicated, but it will actually happen more often than you think. And if you're in the right place, the right time, it can work to your advantage. It can even take out more than two guards. And if it doesn't happen to work, you'll almost always be in a prime place to perform a consecutive CQC. Almost always, anyway. Next, let's discuss consecutive CQC. Consecutive CQC is when you attack multiple guards in a row with CQC throws. To do this, attack the first guard with a CQC throw. Afterwards, you'll be prompted to tap R2 again to do multiple throws on multiple guards. It's very simple, very effective, absolutely incredible looking. It's great for surprise attacking multiple enemies or dealing with them during combat phases. Let's prepare for our next section on CQC. But wait, something seems to be wrong with Spineless Alligator. When you use give or take 15 CQC moves on a single guard, that guard will begin to writhe in pain, and eventually, die. Before we move on, let's give him a barrier, let's see. The next thing we shall cover are cover tactics. To place yourself behind cover, simply walk up to a wall and continue to press the directional stick in the direction of that wall. You can press the directional stick left or right to move, though note that doing this can be unreliable due to the controls being a tad oversensitive. From cover, it is possible to slam your enemy. Press the R2 button while pressed up against cover to do this. The attack hides the enemy behind the cover you were laying in. Note that it is possible to do this move whether the enemy is facing away from you or towards you. The animation will be the exact same regardless. Also, the cover takedown is so stealthy that apparently if another enemy sees you do it, they won't actually see you. They will only perceive you as if they have seen something from far away and must go and investigate. There are more things you can do such as performing grabs from behind cover, but we will discuss those in detail when we talk about grabbing more. Now we will explain corner tactics. Being in a corner is basically when you are using cover and position yourself at the end of one. Again, due to the oversensitivity of the controls, it doesn't always seem reliable. But, do your best to get a handle on it. The corner takedown is when Big Boss is positioned against the wall at the corner and an enemy is nearby. Tap the R2 button to slam them in the corner. This attack has Big Boss quickly grabbing the enemy and tossing them into the cover he was hiding behind. Note this can be done when the enemy is facing away from you or if the enemy is facing toward you. Most of the time, you'll probably find yourself doing this when the enemy is walking toward you. So you'd probably never notice that sometimes Snake will do a special animation when the enemy is facing away from you. However, it only occurs some of the time. I have no idea what triggers a special animation, so if anyone can enlighten me, I would be much obliged. 
I will say this animation makes much more sense since the other animation has the enemy magically turned around already. I also want to take a moment to applaud Hideo Kojima for having common sense. Corner takedowns are nothing new to the stealth genre. People have done them before Metal Gear Solid 5. MGS5's corner takedown, however, is one of the only that I've seen that actually goes out of its way to be a stealth maneuver and hide the body. Assassin's Creed of all, this, of, of all series may be the only other to do this as well. The only problem with performing such an excellent maneuver, of course, is that you need to be behind a cover to do, corner to do it, and the enemy must be moving in that direction. And like with the cover takedown, enemies do not actually see you performing it. They will only perceive you as if they saw something from far away. The attack itself makes no noise like the cover takedown, and of course, it does wall damage, so the enemy is knocked down for 4 minutes. Tapping the R2 button without holding the control stick in any direction will allow you to strike your opponent. Repeatedly tap the R2 button without holding the control stick to form a combo. While it appears different from older Metal Gears and looks as if it's more complicated to perform, in reality it is the same as tapping the punch and kick button over and over. Unlike past Metal Gears, a full combo will automatically knock out your opponent. In past games, you had to awkwardly punch twice, stop, and then tap punch twice again. What's the point when you could just throw them? I also want to discuss the balancer. Why ever use the striking combo at all? It's obviously slower to use than the throw. The balancing answers this issue. Would the throw only leave someone knocked out for 45 seconds? A striking combo would leave them knocked out indefinitely, making it an invaluable skill. The amount of strikes it takes to knock out an enemy, and the animation depends. It is dependent on how you face the enemy. If you strike an enemy from the rear, you will trigger animations for a combo that takes only 3 hits to knock them out. If you strike an enemy from the front, however, you will trigger animations for a combo that takes 5 hits. Note that since you have to release the control stick in order to perform a set of strikes, that means you, have to move, you would have to move in to reach the enemy, quickly let go of the stick, and begin tapping the R2 button. While this seems like it would not work out smoothly, it's actually easy to get used to. Let's discuss the two combos in detail. The two have notable differences gameplay-wise. And animation-wise, unlike past Metal Gears which had simple punch and kick animations, 5 has some unique attacks. Let's discuss the 3 hit first. The 3 hit combo is conservative in its movements in that the enemy will generally remain in place while you attack and fall where you began to attack him. So while it isn't as quick and stealthy as the throw, it is much more stealthy than the 5 hit. Animation wise, the 3 hit and 5 hit combos, as well as the disarm, all begin with 2 palm strikes to the shoulders. The 3 hit combo has Big Boss opening with the twin palm strikes, followed by a stomp to the shins, before turning the enemy and delivering a knockout blow. The attacks are an example of Kojima's desire for realism. Various combat systems and kendo focus on striking certain areas of the body. The wrists because someone cannot attack without them, the ankles and shins because of mobility, and the chest and neck for obvious reasons. Striking the shoulders disrupts the soldier's ability to fight back, stomping the shin destroys the mobility, leaving Big Boss a clean opening for a final blow. As for damage, as mentioned before, the 3 hit combo's power knocks out the enemy permanently unless another guard finds him, making the 3 hit very useful. And I know what you're thinking, isn't this technically a 4 hit combo? Yes it is, but it's called a 3 hit combo because it takes 3 button presses to do it. One for the twin palm strikes, one for the kick to the shins, and one for the knockout blow, each a unique button press. 
And I should mention that even though it all seems like a blur, since each strike or set of strikes is a unique button press, you can actually pace yourself if you'd like. But if you're aiming to simply knock out the enemy, rapidly tapping out the R2 button does work. Now let's discuss the 5 hit combo. The 5 hit combo is in many ways the opposite of the 3 hit. It is not conservative and the attack leaves the enemy quite a distance from their initial spot, making it less stealthy than the 3 hit. The attack is significantly longer, making Big Boss visible for a longer period of time. Both the 3 hit and the 5 hit combo are equal in power, meaning there is no real advantage. Basically, the 3 hit rewarded you for being stealthy, while the 5 hit's length and drawn out animation are a kind of punishment. You obviously have to use this move because the enemy turned and saw you, but you have to use it because you wanted to make sure he was grounded for a long period of time. The 3 hit combo is a surprise attack. The 5 hit is a full frontal assault that deals with a momentarily aware enemy. Its benefits over the 3 hit? Well, it's one of the most hardcore animations in the entire game. During the 5 hit, Big Boss delivers the twin strikes to the shoulders before a punch to the kidney, followed by a kick to the enemy's left shin to neutralize mobility, then striking the left wrist and left shoulder, then the left wrist again as well as the right wrist, and now that all offensive abilities have been neutralized, Big Boss finishes with a knockout punch. And yes, I know that technically, this is a 9 hit combo but some of the moves are done with a single press. It's called a 5 hit combo because it takes 5 button presses to perform this move. One for the twin palm, one for the kidney punch and shin kick, one for the strikes of the left wrist and left shoulder, one for the wrist strikes, and then one for the final blow. Also note that if you perform a combo into a wall or a large object, Big Boss will automatically kick them into the wall as part of the combo. For the most part, it's a nice little animation bonus. The only real gameplay bonus this gives is that it shortens the combo, allowing you to save time and remain visible for a shorter period of time. The 3-hit combo can essentially become a 2-hit, and the 5-hit ends up shortened as well. In fact, if the enemy is close enough to a wall or large object, Big Boss can knock them out in a single hit. And it seems yet another has lost his life in training for the great cause of Big Boss. It's time for another burial at sea. The basic grab maneuver is back and is very easy to perform. Simply hold R2 to grab your opponent. Doing this while standing will begin a standing grab position. Note that this causes the enemy to automatically drop their rifle if they have one. From here, you have a number of options which we will get to in a moment. You can do this move while standing or crouching. Doing this in a crouch position will bring them down to the ground. Note that you can switch between standing and crouching by tapping the X button at any time. And note that you can grab someone from the front as well. As mentioned from before, this can be done from cover, thus pulling your enemy out of sight. For obvious reasons, this can only be done in a crouched position. And this can be done from a corner as well, also concealing yourself and your enemy around the corner. This can be done from a crouching position as well, and from the rear as well as the front. After grabbing, you can drag your opponent by holding down the directional stick in whatever direction you want to drag them in. Dragging them from a standing position is faster, but you have made yourself more visible. Dragging from a crouch position is slower, but is obviously more stealthy. Dragging is also a useful tactic for pulling enemies into grass or behind cover before you neutralize them. As mentioned before, once the enemy is in a grab position, you have a number of options. While holding someone in a grab position, you can perform a throw. While holding someone, quickly let go of the R2 button and tap it again while pressing the directional stick in any direction to perform a throw. There will be an animation difference depending on where you press the stick. Pressing it in the direction the stick is facing will do a forward face plant. This can be done from a crouch position as well. Holding the directional stick in the opposite direction of Big Boss while tapping R2 to slam the enemy will slam them. And this move can be done while crouched as well. 
Both of these moves will keep the enemy knocked out for 45 seconds. And of course, if you are near a wall, press the stick in the direction of that wall and tap R2 to make Big Boss throw them into it. Note that it does not matter whether or not you are facing that wall, as long as you press the directional stick in that direction and tap R2 at the same time, Big Boss will automatically turn and throw them into the wall. And note that it does not matter whether you are standing or crouching. Note that holding the directional stick facing the direction opposite Big Boss will do a normal throw. You can also throw an enemy off of an elevated area. After holding them in a grab position, press the R2 button and the directional stick towards the edge of the area you are on to throw them off. Of course, if you press the stick in the opposite direction, Big Boss will simply throw them. I also want to point out that if you try to throw them into another guard like you did with the normal throws, Big Boss will not, I repeat, will not aim for the second guard. Repeatedly tap R2 to choke the enemy, rendering them unconscious. The choke will leave the enemy knocked out for 4 minutes, making it equally powerful to attacks that do wall damage. Thanks to the versatility of the grab, this move can be done in a wide number of situations while standing or crouching. Alternatively, you can kill your enemy using a knife. While holding someone, press the triangle button to stab them. Again, this can be done in so many ways. Hold L1 to bring up the interrogation menu. You can now use the right control stick to toggle a command. Press up to interrogate for information. Most of the time the guards will tell you the location of a weapon or item which will be allocated to your map. And most of the time they will only have one thing to tell you. Speak. Press left in order to them in order to make them call a friend over. Call them. Somebody, get over here. If you want to go from a grab to a hold up position, simply let go of R2 and the hold L2. We'll cover holdups in more detail later. Hold L2 while in a grab position to arm yourself. The enemy you are holding is now effectively a human shield, and you can now fire at enemies by tapping R2. You can now let go of the R2 button. As long as you have L2 held down, the enemy you are holding will remain in place. In fact, once you have held R2 for about a second, you can immediately let go and hold L2 to initiate the human shield position. This option is great for quick action and for combat situations. However, if you decide to release L2 to put your weapon down, keep in mind that you must hold R2 again, otherwise you will let go of the enemy. Using the column command from the interrogation menu and the human shield option, you can set up a trap. While holding the enemy, you can use your prisoner to call a guard over who you can then take out. Let's talk about the disarm and holdups now. The disarm can be performed by tapping R2 and then holding L2 in quick succession. This attack will have Big Boss take the enemy's weapon and turn it on them, initiating an automatic holdup. As complex as this may sound, it's actually very easy to perform. It can also be performed from the rear as well as the front. Note that doing this from behind will turn the enemy around in your direction. This can be performed from a crouching position also. Once a guard no longer has a rifle, and even after you have disarmed him from his, uh, of his pistol, every time you perform the disarm afterwards, he will magically have his pistol in his hand again and again. Let's take a moment to analyze the animation. 
If the enemy is holding a rifle, Big Boss will deliver his twin palm strike attack. Now that the enemy has been weakened, he grabs the gun but throws it at them. This move actually makes more sense than you think. When you grab something in someone's hands, their immediate reaction is to pull it towards themselves. Big Boss, rather than pulling the rifle, takes advantage of the enemy's expected reaction. The extra momentum causes the person to be struck by their own rifle and dislodges the weapon from their hands. If the enemy is holding a pistol, Big Boss will deliver the dual strikes to the enemy before he grabs the pistol and flips it out of the enemy's hands into his own and then holds the enemy up. One thing I want to quickly note is that once you release the L2 button, after doing a disarm, Big Boss will drop the weapon he had commandeered. I will also note that if you want, you can strike an enemy a few times before you disarm them. This really isn't necessary and from a tactical standpoint isn't really useful, however striking the enemy before you grab their weapon does look pretty cool in action. What is the disarm useful for? The disarm is very useful in case you are low on ammo. It's also a dynamic CPC mover which attacks spontaneous and flows right into the action making it useful in combat. But its most obvious use is as a hold up mechanism. From here on this guide will move on to being a tutorial on both the disarm and the hold up. For the sake of being thorough I'll explain the basic hold up. Hold L2 to arm yourself with a weapon in front of an unaware enemy. This can be done at all angles and can be done while you are standing or when you are crouching. After holding up the enemy you can do as you please but there are a number of things you should keep in mind. As long as you are facing an enemy with your gun they will not move. However, if you put your gun away and you are within their field of vision, they will eventually try to escape. Thankfully, unlike older Metal Gears, they won't try to escape immediately when you put your gun away. Just be cautious as the enemy will react to whether or not you have a gun and whether or not you are looking at them. However, if you are behind the enemy, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Whether it be having time to change your weapon in front of the enemy to various offensive options, the fact they win a scoop right away gives you sufficient time to do a number of things while their hands are still in the air. You can now either interrogate him, knock him out, or also note you can pretty much mess with the enemy as much as you want. The enemy will always return to his held up position. Guards will remain in a held up position unless a combat alert goes off, or if they see you walking around, or if another enemy makes contact with them. Anyway, from a hold up position you have a few other options. Hold the L1 button to bring up the interrogation menu. From here you can toggle the right control stick to interrogate the enemy for information, to call a fellow soldier, or to tell them to lie down. An important note about interrogation, you do not have to hold up your weapon in order to interrogate enemies like in older games. You only have to hold the L1 button. But again, note that taking too long to do anything without a weapon will give them time to escape. But as alluded to earlier as well, this is a perfectly acceptable method to use behind the enemy. Guards with their hands in the air can be used as bait. Similar to how you could use the column command while grabbing an enemy, you can do so now. But since your hands are free, your ability to set up traps are greatly expanded. You can allow a held up guard to be seen by a nearby enemy, or use the column command to lure a nearby guard over. Just make sure that the guard you are using as bait does not see you hiding unarmed. Also note that the guard you are using as bait will not move unless a soldier makes direct contact with him. Since we covered most of the interrogation menu in the grab section, I'll cover the new option available during holdups, telling the enemy to lie down. An enemy that has been forced to lie down will remain there for all eternity unless a combat alarm goes off or another enemy finds him. You can pretty much do whatever you want and the enemy won't do anything. While the enemy is in this position, you can interrogate them as well. And again, you don't need to hold up your weapon either. Simply hold L1. Call them. Somebody get over here! 
An enemy lying down makes for the perfect trap. Again, you can wait for an enemy to see them, or you can use the column command. And finally, if you tap R2 while they're in this position, Big Boss will knock them out with a kick. And it seems we lose yet another friend to the cause. Let's discuss other CQC tactics. If an enemy is on a higher platform and Big Boss is below him on a ladder, most notably the guard towers, you can tap R2, which will cause Big Boss to grab the enemy and pull him from the tower, knocking him out indefinitely. Note that you can quickly tap X while on a ladder to drop down immediately, in case you don't plan on climbing all the way to the top. This is obviously a quick way to neutralize guards and towers, but note that this move is very loud. If there are enemies nearby, they may come to investigate. Sometimes, they'll even see you, which can initiate a combat alert. A rather quick way of taking an enemy out and concealing another body you may have knocked out along the way is the fireman carry throw. Let's say you have knocked out an enemy. Pick him up and put him into a fireman carry position by holding the O button. Once you have approached the enemy you wish to knock out, simply tap the R2 button. Guards knocked out this way will be unconscious for 4 minutes. And you can actually do this with prisoners as well, Chico and Paz being the exception. Let's talk about the low kick now. If an enemy is for some reason in a low position, tap R2 to make Big Boss do a low kick. Here you can see two uses of the low kick. One is that it is a weapon of mass destruction, as it will automatically knock out the enemy no matter what. Secondly, the low kick can be used to wake up enemies as well. Is this video game logic, or do the wonders of CQC know no bounds? And you would think this move would be weak and would only knock out enemies for a short period of time, but in actuality the low kick will knock out someone for 4 minutes, equal to that of moves that do wall damage. I just want to point out a few other things. The low kick is great if you're in the middle of a combat situation and have a near dead enemy on the ground. Simply kick them to knock them out before they can pull a pistol on you. And if you are fortunate enough to reach a guard while he is in the middle of doing a baseball slide into cover, tap R2 to kick him and knock him out. It can be useful if an enemy is getting up from a tranquilizer or a knockout you delivered to him earlier. As mentioned earlier, if you have forced an enemy into a lie down position, you can choose to kick him to knock him out. Also note the animation changes depending on where you are kicking the enemy. Sometimes Big Boss will do a stomp instead of a kick. It probably happens when you are closer to the body. The dive maneuver, which is this game's replacement of the roll, is used more often for diving into cover or into crawling position. However, it can be used as a move where Big Boss attacks the vertical base of the enemies. Note that this is the only CQC move in the game that does not knock out the enemy automatically. This means you will have to supplement it with a low kick. The dive can be performed from reasonably high locations as well, just in case you find yourself on top of something and need to knock the enemy out quickly. However, note that you cannot do this from too high, such as atop a large building, as this will call Big Boss to revert into a falling position. Here are a few tips to keep in mind. Remember to factor in the weather. When it's raining, the sound of rain muffles the sound of your footsteps. This means you can crouch walk at normal speed behind enemies and throw them or do a 3-hit combo. When the weather is in good condition, however, enemies will be able to hear your footsteps, meaning they will turn around if you are walking at full speed. Your options are either to take your time and walk slower, or be quick about throwing guards when you reach them. Hiding bodies. If you throw guards off the island, it does not count as a kill, making it a great hiding spot. Distractions. It goes without saying that magazines make for great distractions. And enemy movements. If you are put in a position where you must approach an enemy from the front, keep their head movements in mind. 
If the head is turned right or left, it may be an opportune moment to move in and do some quick CQC. If the enemy coughs, however, they will still be aware that it's not a good moment to move in. However, if the enemy yawns, it actually may be a perfect opportunity to move in, as they will have diminished visibility when they do this. As we close, we would like to mention that MSF is dedicated to training troops in the same exact method that the boss taught Big Boss. Before we go, we would like to thank all the potential recruits who took part in our demonstration. If you would like to join MSF, please contact Kazahira Miller for more details. With all of that said, I thank you for watching this video and hope it helps with your Metal Gear Solid experience. Before I go, I leave you with a demonstration of Big Boss's latest technique, Close Bombing Combat. And lastly, in the name of shameless self-promotion, please like and subscribe.